Welcome to Open for Business, the Gallatin Valley's only local business and consumer talk show featuring Tom Eaglehoff. The Man Entrepreneur Magazine Radio called the leading authority in the United States for doing business in small town. Here he is, speaker, author, small business consultant, and Mrs. Eaglehoff's favorite son, Tom Eaglehoff. All right, welcome everyone. Open for business. We air every uh, Saturday live from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mountain Time on AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, Montana. If you'd like to be a part of the big broadcast, go to kmmsam.com and click Listen Live. The call-in number during the show, 406-522-TALK, 406-522-8255. I'm here. You're here. Let's get the show on the road. All right. Welcome back, everyone. 50 degrees outside. It is 25 minutes before the top of the hour. I want to welcome you to the podcast portion of Open for Business. Uh, Each week I share some tips and tricks I've learned over the years about advertising, marketing, promotion, and building strong, successful businesses. And I do these Open for Business podcasts live every Saturday between 1130 and noon, Mountain Time, uh, from the studios of AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, Montana. And, of course, I stream worldwide on the net at KMMSAM.com. If you missed any of the previous podcasts, you'll find them all on my YouTube channel. And while you're there, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel? And you'll never miss another weekly podcast. You'll also find a link to my podcast on my website at smalltownmarketing.com. Com. That's smalltownmarketing.com. Go about halfway down the homepage on the left side, and you'll find a link to the podcast page and the YouTube page, so you can catch up on any of my podcasts that you might have missed. Now, today's topic, I want to talk about how to design and write a basic brochure. Now, the company brochure is by far the most used and probably misused tool in business today. So in this podcast, I want to explore some common mistakes in brochure writing and design and how to avoid them. So to begin, you need a clear understanding of how to use the finished product. There are two and only two functions of brochures. The brochure design will depend on which of the two you select. Brochure type number one, this brochure is designed to attract attention. It plays on the emotion of the customer. When they see it in a a display rack, they must pick it up and see what it says. It has an attention-getting headline. It's designed to spend all its time on public display exposed to as much of your target market as possible. It'll contain lots of white space and short thoughts rather than long paragraphs. It contains a call to action that requires you to ask the customer to make a phone call, come on down, clip a coupon, mail a reply card, or some other action that puts you and the customer in contact with each other. Think of this brochure as the appetizer to your business. Something to tickle the palate, but still leaves them hungry. Brochure type number two, think of this brochure as the main course. This brochure is designed for the customer who's learned about your company and has requested more information. He or she may have seen your type one brochure that I described earlier. Unlike type one, type two can be crammed with information. Customers who request information want to know everything. They become insatiable for product knowledge. No matter what you send, it may not be enough to satisfy some customers. So this type of brochure should never be used in display racks or laid out for the curious passerby. Casual customer who's unfamiliar with your business will be turned off by the thought of wading through this mountain of information just to see what you do. Next, let's talk about the most common mistakes of brochure use. Have you ever heard the expression, don't send a boy to do a man's job? Well, don't expect your brochure alone to make the sale for you. The purpose of the brochure is to educate your customer about the subject matter and encourage the customer to get in touch with you. There are some small ticket items, however, that can be sold with a direct mail brochure. These brochures are almost always type 1. They're usually more successful with some supporting documentation. So remember the two points I mentioned earlier, a call to action, then educate in detail. Hopefully the brochure should get you the appointment with a customer, but it's up to you to make the sale. So where do you start with your design? For nine out of 10 businesses, you'll want to develop the copy, the words of the brochure first. Why? Because you only have a certain amount of space to tell your story. You can always select graphics and pictures that will reinforce your message later on. Write your copy from the customer's point of view, not yours. It's not what you, the business, want to say. It's what the customer wants to know and hear. So once the copy is completed, work on making it shorter and more descriptive. Mark Twain was supposed to have said, I'd have written you a shorter letter, but I didn't have the time. 
paint descriptive word pictures whenever possible. A picture is retained in the mind much longer than mere words. Did you ever tell someone a story beginning with the words, picture yourself doing this? We do that because it's powerful. If you or your designer have created a visual look to your other advertising, by all means, continue that same theme in your brochure. That family resemblance will be more comfortable to the reader. Now, how do you talk to your customers in your brochure? Ask your employees to help write the brochure copy based on feedback they hear from your customers. Things you don't hear. Or better yet, ask some of your better customers to help write it. You may be surprised at the impressions you get. So try to eliminate as many customer decisions as possible in your brochure. Always assume the customer will eventually buy the product or service. Don't use the words if and maybe. Those might invite the possibility of a negative response from the customer. Never ask open-ended questions in a brochure. Make sure you phrase any questions in such a way that the answer can only be yes. Companies always want to list the most important features of their products. Well, a feature is what a product has. A benefit is what a product does. The more the product does, the more attractive it becomes to your customer. The problem is customers don't care about any feature unless there's a clear benefit to them. This car has four doors, so what? Compare that to, I notice you have three children. You'll love the convenience of having four doors when the kids are with you. Use emotion. You want your brochure to sound and look professional. You can accomplish this without using stiff phrasing or formal tone. To most readers, professional is just plain boring. Pick your best customer and pretend you're speaking only to him or her. Get a tape recorder and tape a conversation, telling them the points you want to cover in the brochure. Your brochure shouldn't be a textbook. It should be a conversation between friends. Now, here's a few brochure don'ts. Don't use more than five to seven lines of type per paragraph. Don't average more than two or three sentences per paragraph. Don't indent paragraphs that have a space between them. Don't start sentences with numbers. For example, if 20% of all policemen prefer powdered donuts, you don't put the number 20% at the beginning of that sentence. The correct writing of that sentence is spell out 20%. 20% of all policemen prefer powdered donuts, but you never start a sentence with a number. Don't put two spaces after uh, periods when using the computer. Page layout and word processing programs put the proper spacing in after periods automatically. Don't use underline or all caps as a way to stress a point. These are leftovers from the typewriter age. Use bold or italics instead. You have total control over what's said and how it's said in your brochure, including the visuals. You control the placement of your brochure and who gets it. Brochures are flexible. You can design a brochure in color, but you may need to print it in black and white until you can afford the expense of color printing. You can do it yourself. Many brochure templates are available online, although I would recommend using professional graphic designers as soon as possible. So what are the weaknesses of a brochure? You should always give your brochure to all qualified customers. However, using it for mass audience may be cost prohibitive. Other media may be more economical for reaching a lar larger audience, radio, TV, newspaper, etc. So if your business changes, your brochures are immediately outdated and all that money is wasted. And trying to match the competition can be expensive if you're forced to go into special designs or four-color brochures before your budget can handle it. The answer is to get whatever you can out there working. Waiting until you have the perfect brochure will just give your competition a head start. So how do you get started tomorrow morning? Go to your local chamber of commerce, economic development office, or a major hotel and look for a large rack of brochures. Stand back and look at the rack. Which brochures catch your eye? Which ones do you want to pick up? Is it because of the ink color, the typeface, the headline, paper color, visual design? Now look again. Take a look at some of the brochures you didn't select and ask the following. Why didn't you look at them? Can you find something specific that made you skip right over them? Was it the lack of an eye-catching graphic? Was it a hard-to-read typeface? Did the headline lack sales appeal? Was there no call to action? Was it because of the design of the rack hid the message? Or was it because it was printed on a blah color of paper? And the most important rule of all, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, whenever emotion and logic come into conflict, emotion always wins. We make emotional decisions and then we'll create a logical argument to justify that decision. So have you ever bought a CD to get one song? Did you tell yourself you'd learn to love the other songs? Or the song is so good it's worth it and besides you deserve it? 
This is a very important message to keep in mind in all your advertising. If you present a logical argument in your brochure and your competitor pre presents an emotional argument for the similar product, you may have a problem. Get as much competitive information as you can. If you're a small company competing against a public, uh, public company, buy a share of their stock. You'll receive all the stock reports uh, and any stockholder uh, information included in their annual report. Your brochure displays your business image when you aren't there. It tells customers how badly you want or don't want their business. It tells them that you're proud of the benefits you can offer them, or it tells them you're a corner cutter. If you don't take pride in your image, what makes a customer think you'll take pride in your work? Show your customers who you really are. And that's the podcast. If you missed any of my previous podcasts, you'll find them all on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel or on my website at smalltownmarketing.com. That's smalltownmarketing.com. Go about halfway down the homepage on the left side, and you'll find a link to the podcast and YouTube page so you can catch up on any of my podcasts that you might have missed. So tune in each Saturday, and let's build successful businesses together.